reality. And that's where we've had all of these different plagues and, and famines and different categories of diseases. They've been because a wide range of people did not have the natural immunity to be able to protect themselves from these different types of pathogens, whether they're living or non-living. They couldn't protect themselves against them. And over time, recently, we've developed medical advances to allow for that. And we're back in point to our good man Fleming here. You guys remember us uh, discussing his discovery of penicillin. When he discovered penicillin in 1928, it was an absolute breakthrough. It was really considered the miracle drug all across the world. It was just being raved as the ability of protecting and, and defending you against just about any kind of infection. In reality, what these particular types of antibiotics, like penicillin, are able to do is help keep new bacteria from forming. And the way it's able to do that is by not allowing certain components of a bacterial cell wall to actually finish the process of forming its cell wall. So when bacteria replicate and make more of itself, if you're introducing an antibiotic, it actually keeps the cell walls of the bacteria from forming properly. And if you don't have a proper forming external wall or external barrier, just like at the end of the lytic cycle, a cell can't function if it, if it doesn't have a stable internal environment. So these antibiotics actually keep new bacteria from being produced properly, and that helps control the population. So antibiotics by itself don't actually kill off a bacterial infection. They don't actually cure you. What antibiotics actually are able to do is slow down the replication process of bacteria and keep a lot of the bacteria from making more of themselves. But you still have to worry about that current population and that's where your immune system comes in to fight it off. So penicillin was this first bacterial control module, this first process that was actually able to keep your bacterial population from getting too out of control if we're talking about the pathogenic kind. And this is where the infections were really turning into very serious diseases and amputations and, uh, and death. And so it was raved by all parts of the world and every time anybody had any kind of an infection they just threw a whole bunch of penicillin on it and it just worked, worked miracles and it just did a great job. And everybody really thought that that was the end of bacterial infections for the rest of human existence. However, if you remember what we've talked about with natural selection, specific to antibiotics, they, just like any other population, when introduced with a very strong environmental pressure, very quickly started to recognize what the advantages were and what the disadvantages were. And they started adapting to that particular environment. Remember this diagram, I showed you this particular one um, in the last lecture of the previous unit. This is a perfect example of a directional selection. In this case, the different variety and the different variation in the traits is its own innate resistance level to a particular antibiotic. Let's use penicillin as the example. If you introduce penicillin to an initial population that's never seen it, the vast majority of those bacteria are not going to be able to replicate properly because of what penicillin can do. However, within that population, maybe there's one or two percent of the bacteria that naturally are able to block the function of penicillin and continue to form their cell walls properly. So those one or two percent are going to stay living and stay functioning even if there's a whole bunch of penicillin being brought into the, into the area. So even though the overall population is very well controlled and that person will be able to keep a healthy life, what they're keeping functioning and what they're allowing to continue growing is that newly resistant strain of bacteria. So now the next population is going to have a much higher proportion of those that are naturally resistant to it than the previous population. And the same thing is going to happen over and over again. And when year after year you're keeping introducing the exact same environmental pressure over and over and over, and they just fired out penicillin to everybody. Anytime anybody was sick, they just threw penicillin at them and said, don't worry about it, this will fix everything. You can see how over multiple generations of the exact same pressure, eventually the strains of bacteria are going to become almost completely resistant to this particular strain of penicillin. This is a perfect example of natural selection occurring. And so this happened and, and we're to the point now where very few bacterial infections can actually be controlled by penicillin because of this overexposure of that particular antibiotic. So what did we as doctors and scientists do? Uh, we can't use penicillin anymore so let's just make another one. So they made other antibiotics. They found other types of molds and other types of fungi that do a good job of controlling bacteria. And so they introduced that instead of the penicillin. Guess what happened? 
miracle drug. We got a new miracle drug. It worked just as well as penicillin. Now this one is able to fight everything off that penicillin wasn't able to fight off. And it was great, again, for a few years. And this same process happened over and over again. You continue to introduce a new environmental pressure and keep that pressure consistent. Eventually the bacteria are going to only be the ones that are naturally resistant because all of the other ones are dying off. And the same process happens over again. And now you have bacteria that are resistant to one strain of antibiotics or two types of antibiotics, maybe three. And you keep adding to this resistance until you get to these what we consider superbugs. What you see down here is an example of MRSA. MRSA stands for Methicillin Resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Methicillin is an example of one of the super antibiotics that we have today. This antibiotic is one of the ones where we introduce if nothing else works because we as doctors have figured this out. Antibiotics don't work if we overexpose them to certain strains of bacteria. Eventually those bacteria become resistant to the antibiotic for this whole process of natural selection we've talked about before. So they've recognized this and rather than just keep adding and making new antibiotics in the same pattern over and over again, they have a few and a select reserve antibiotics that they rarely introduce. And these have become like the last resort antibiotics. These are antibiotics that they will only use if everything else fails. And one of those antibiotics is methicillin. Now this particular strain of Staphylococcus aureus is so resistant to every type of antibiotic because of our overexposure to it that it's now also resistant to methicillin, which again is one of the last resort antibiotics we have. So if someone does develop this particular type of staph infection, it becomes very dangerous. And there are multiple scenarios of people who maybe just have basic infections, no big deal, but because of an added infection that happens because of exposure to this specific strain of MRSA, what used to be just a small infection or a small cut is now a life-threatening pathogen. And this is all because of what we consider antibiotic resistance. So you would think that modern medicine has learned from its mistakes and you would think that doctors today would not prescribe antibiotics unless it was absolutely needed. But guess what? How many of you guys have had any kind of a virus and you've gone to the doctor because of that virus? Maybe you've had the flu lately or you've had any other category of virus and you've gone to the doctor for it. I know I have a little one. I have a son. And uh, over the first year or so, when we went to the doctor, it was, it was fairly common that he developed just a basic cold or a simple flu or just little kinds of viruses here and there. And every single time, our doctor prescribed him antibiotics. And I remember looking at that doctor every single time and wondering, why are you prescribing antibiotics for a viral infection? Because I understand what you need to understand, which is that viruses are not living. Antibiotics, by definition, just look at what the word means. Antibiotics are against living things. They attack and help control the population of living things because they have structural components that are similar to that of living things that are helped to be kept under control. So antibiotics work great against bacterial infections that have not developed a resistance to them. They do absolutely nothing for a virus. This is important you understand this. Antibiotics do not do anything to help protect viral infections. This is an example of an ad that was spread all throughout the hospitals and doctor's offices throughout the country by the Centers for Disease Control. This is the CDC, the, the one part of the country that's focused on protecting your body from disease. They sent this message out everywhere because they want this message clear as well. Antibiotics should not be overprescribed and should not be overexposed to particular categories of bacteria because if they are, they'll develop the same kinds of resistance and then those antibiotics will no longer be effective. Now the reason most doctors still prescribe antibiotics is because they fear that if your immune system is very busy fighting off a viral infection, then it may not be able to do much to control certain types of bacterial pathogens. And in that case, the antibiotics are there to help keep other infections from getting out of control while your immune system is busy fighting something else. It makes sense, and that's why doctors still do it. But you see the downside of this. There's a very negative consequence here. Now we have a situation where it's just as likely that our current antibiotics that are effective against our pathogens, our bacterial pathogens, will not be successful for much longer. 
So we have to think about a future here. What's our next steps? What are some things we can do uh, in modern medicine to try to reset this process or figure out ways to control these multiple resistance bacteria that are developing, these superbugs that are developing because of how we are exposing them to antibiotics. I hope you're able to see a lot of the connections to your own everyday lives and it's just going to keep happening for the next couple of units. So see you guys next time.